morning everyone welcome to our morning worship and prayer let's begin today worshiping god through this song Si Yahweh ang aking pastor Di ako magkukulang Pinahihimlay niya ako sa Linti ang pastulan Inakay niya sa tahimik na Batisan, pinanunong balik niya aking kalakasan, pinapatnubayan ng bawat hakbang di ako nag-iisa. God, we praise you, we worship you, be honored, be blessed by our time together. We say we start today with you and with your word. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning worship and prayer. Have you ever lost something that was so important or valuable to you? 
probably your keys, your phone, money, your wallet. What did you do to find it? How did you feel when you lost it? You see, just a few months ago, my husband lost his wallet. So what we did was we tried to look everywhere, tried to look at his bag if it's there, tried to look at the car, tried to retrace our steps, but to no avail, it was lost. We could not find it anywhere. You see, there is also something that is so important to God that was lost. That is lost. And we see a glimpse of what's lost that's important to God in the Gospel of Luke. Luke in the Gospel speaks of something that's super important to God. And Jesus speaks about it through three parables. Parables are stories that point to spiritual truths. These parables point us to what it means about life in the kingdom of God. What is so important to God that is lost? We find the story in Luke chapter 15 about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. Could I invite you to open your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 15? Luke chapter 15. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing, and when he comes home, he calls together his friends, his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. This parable points us to that picture of a shepherd who, upon losing one sheep, leaves the 99 to find the missing one. And upon finding it, carries the sheep on his shoulder, calls a party with his neighbors and friends and rejoices. For now, his lost sheep has now been found. Continuing on, Jesus further on says, verse 8, Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost, just so I tell you. There is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The second parable of something that was lost points us to a woman who stops at nothing, sweeping her house, lighting a lamp until she finds her missing coin. And once found, rejoices calls her friends and neighbors, throws a party until that coin is found. Now, third parable. And he said, there was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to the, his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had, took a journey into a far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of the country who sent him into the fields to the pigs, to feed the pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to his senses, when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise, go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose, came to his father. I love this verse. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us 
eat and celebrate. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. The third parable speaks this time of a father who, when his son wanted to run away from him, he loved the son enough to let him decide on his way. But as soon as the lost son turned his back away from his old life, turned back to come home to his father, Scripture tells us about a father who, while the son, the lost son, was a long way off, was waiting while the son was coming home, rehearsing his speech, ran to the son, kissed him, threw a party with all of his friends, put a robe, put a ring, restoring his identity, restoring the son's dignity, celebrates for his son, who was as if assumed dead, is now alive again, restored to the father again. The son who was lost is now found again. And these three stories that Jesus tells us points us to how God is like, that He will stop at nothing so that what is lost would be found. But at the same time, the father who waits until his lost sons and daughters come home. Now, we talked about the lost son. We talked about the one who ran away and rebelled from his father. But you see, there were two sons in the story. Verse 25, Now his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you. I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this your son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And the father said to his son, Son, you are always with me. And all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad. For this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost. And is found. It points us also to the father who reminds the elder brother and those of us who are like him that all that is his is ours. The eldest son stayed with the father but missed the point. The eldest son thought he was slaving away for the father that he failed to see the relationship and all that he had in the father. It's as if there were two lost sons in the story, isn't it? The one who ran away and the one who missed the point of relationship with the father. But here we're pointed to the father who loves both. Loving the rebellious son enough to wait for his return, run and kiss him, and loving the elder son enough to remind him, you're not a slave, you're my son. All I have is yours. Three parables that show us what the heart of God is like. Ever wondered what, put a smile, what puts a smile on God's face? Ever wondered what makes God happy? What makes God happy is His lost sons and daughters coming home to Him, being reconciled to Him. Just like the sheep owner who would stop at nothing to look for his sheep, the coin owner who would stop at nothing until she finds her lost coin and celebrates, God will stop at nothing to look for the lost. That's God's heart. No wonder Jesus says it this way in Luke 19, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. That's why Jesus came, to seek and save the lost. God's heart is to seek and save the lost. His heart is for his lost sons and daughters to come home to me, to come home to him and be reconciled to him. God's heart is for his lost sons and daughters to come back home to him and be reconciled back to him. That's what matters to God's heart. That's why it should matter to us also. Earlier on I told you of a story of Jerry, my husband losing his wallet. 
left on its own, that wallet wouldn't find its way back to us. But thankfully, there was a person who picked it up. And what that person did was he messaged all of Jerry's friends, looked for Jerry's name in the photo, in the ID, in his license, messaged all of his friends in Facebook until finally the messages came to him one after the other. The person who picked up his wallet did not stop until Jerry responded to any of the friends who would message him about his missing wallet. And true enough, what was lost that was so important found its way back to us because there was one person who stopped at nothing so that it would be returned to its owner. There was one man who did not stop. One man who stopped at nothing to seek and save you and me. Jesus, at the cost of his life, because of his life, death, and resurrection, became the way so that us, who were once lost, would be reconciled back to the Father. The question is this, will we also join in what God is doing in bringing back his lost sons and daughters home? Will we share to other people who don't know God yet that they could come home to the Father? Whether they're in the rebellious side, running away from God, or whether in the, they're in the religious side, knowing God, being with God, but missing the point of relationship with Him. Would we partner with God in what He is doing to bring back His lost sons and daughters to Him? God will not stop until He brings His lost sons and daughters home. Will we join Him by preaching about Jesus, the God who lived and died resurrected for all of us so that we and I would be reconciled back to the Father. The lost are important to God. May lost people who don't have a relationship with God yet also be important to us, that we could put a smile on God's face. Jesus tells us there is so much rejoicing in heaven when one sinner repents. May we find those people, help them grow in their relationship with God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for reminding us about your heart to find and restore that which is lost. God, thank you that just like the sheep, the shepherd, just like the coin owner who would not stop at anything until the lost sheep and the lost coin is found, God, thank you that you stopped at nothing so that we could be found in you. God, thank you for painting to us that picture of a father who waits for people who run away from you to turn back to our senses and you lovingly wait for our return. God, thank you for being the father who runs to us, waits for us, and longs for our return. God, I pray for those of us today hearing this message who may feel like we're running away from you. God, Thank you for reminding us that you're awaiting for our return. God, I pray for those of us who've been walking with you for a long time. We feel like it's routine. We feel like it's tradition. We're serving you. And yet, we miss the point of relationship and that all you have is ours. God, would you restore back again that joy, not of serving, not just of serving, but that joy of being in relationship with you and being with you forever. God, thank you. Thank you for reminding us today that your heart is for your lost sons and daughters to return. This morning, Lord, we want to respond. Whether we're that lost person that you're calling to return or whether you want us, God, to respond to help bring lost sons and daughters back home to you, God, would you use us? We say yes to the call in partnering with you in bringing back your lost sons and daughters home. Help us, God. Lord, I pray that you would put in our hearts names of people who don't know you yet. Lord, thank you that you will be with us as we preach the gospel so that your sons and daughters can be back on right relationship with you. With every moment that we preach the gospel, Lord, we say we love you and we, we love those you love. What, you, what matters to your heart matters to us. Give us, Lord, a fresh passion to preach the gospel, to share who you are to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship God once more through this song. 
Dumaan man ako sa libis ng kamatayan Takot ay walang lugar sa pusong may tiwala Dumaan man ako sa libis ng kamatayan Takot ay walang lugar sa iyo ko'y tiwala Tumaan man ako sa libis ng kamatayan Takot ay walang lugar sa pusong may tiwala Ikaw ang aking tagapagligtas Ikaw sa akin ang lahat-lahat. Yahweh, 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 pag-ibig mo'y wala. the gospel. God bless you. Have an amazing day ahead.